We've been a leader in banking for more than 100 years. You'll find us here, at home, on your phone, and everywhere you go. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Sponsored by Renaissance Bank. Good morning, Northeast Mississippi. This is News Break for Thursday, August 10th. I'm Brad Locke. Thanks for joining us. Just a reminder that News Break comes to you each weekday at 7 a.m. You can watch it on djournal.com, Facebook, YouTube, or the Daily Journal's mobile apps for Apple and Android devices. I'm going to spend the next few minutes looking at news, sports, and weather for Northeast Mississippi. We'll start with the weather forecast for today. Thunderstorms are possible. We're going to see a high of around 88 degrees, low about 72. The chance of rain is 50%. The three-day outlook, looking at the week Weekend, Friday, partly cloudy, high of 89, low of 72, 20% chance of rain. Thunderstorms likely on Saturday, high of 89, low of 72, 80% chance of rain. Could see some thunderstorms again Sunday with a high of 87, low of 73, the chance of rain, 40%. Let's take a look now at some of the top stories from the Daily Journal and djournal.com on this Thursday. Art Dobbs is slowly establishing a routine as the new principal at Tupelo High School, both for himself and for his staff and students. Dobbs comes in early, checks emails, eats breakfast, and drinks a Mountain Dew. Then he goes out and greets students and teachers as they arrive. Dobbs admits the first few days haven't played out exactly as he expected, but he said he enjoys how each day presents a new challenge. The first week of school has been a balancing act as teachers and administrators try to lay out rules, procedures, and expectations without falling behind on instruction. And Dobbs has a few goals for THS and he presented them to the Tupelo Public School District Board on Tuesday. One of those goals is to see the school earn an A rating from the state. He also wants to increase the graduation rate, improve student achievement, increase the number of students taking advanced courses, and boost ACT scores. Robert Clark, the first African-American elected to the state legislature since the 1800s, was honored Wednesday at a ceremony commemorating the 50th anniversary of his election. During the ceremony at the old Capitol Museum, the 88-year-old Clark said his priority as a legislator was to pull together for a better Mississippi. It wasn't always easy for him. When Clark began serving, no other members wanted to sit next to him in the House chamber. And early on, it was difficult for him to be recognized to speak on issues. Clark, elected from Holmes County, went on to serve three terms as House Pro Tem the first time in 1992. Clark's election in 1967 came three years after the Federal Voting Rights Act that led to blacks being able to go to the polls in large numbers in the South. Mississippi now leads the nation in terms of the number of black elected officials. The renovated chapel at North Mississippi Medical Center in Tupelo was dedicated Wednesday. The chapel and newly created meditation room give patients, families, staff, and visitors a place to pray, mourn, celebrate, and reflect. They are located on the third floor of the main unit and are open 24 hours. The NMMC Chapel stays busy with services every week and Bible studies, and when it's occupied, the meditation room offers a quiet space for those who need it. The renovations were funded by a $90,000 donation from the Auxiliary of NMMC. The money comes from the proceeds of the Auxiliary Gift and Floral Shop. Both the chapel and meditation room feature stained glass created by Mississippi artists and nature photography taken by Northeast Mississippi photographers. The interior of the chapel was refreshed with paint and flooring. The ceiling was raised and the pews were replaced with chairs that could be configured to meet the needs of the group meeting within its space. And in sports, Mississippi State's defensive line was hit hard by graduation, but there's still confidence that the group can perform well this season. The Bulldogs lost six players, including three starters, up front from the 2016 unit. Corey Thomas, a junior, and Jeffrey Simmons, a sophomore, are the only returnees with any starting experience. Looking to have expanded roles this year are Fletcher Adams, Grant Harris, Kendall Jones, and Braxton Hoyt. The toughest part of having such an inexperienced group? Finding leadership. Position coach Brian Baker said several young players are attempting to fill that void, including Simmons and redshirt freshman Kobe Jones. Some junior college transfers could help out as well. Chauncey Rivers and Lee Autry have joined up, while Trey Brown will hit the field after redshirting last season. Baker said he's excited about the group he has. That's it for Newsbreak on this Thursday. Before I go, I'd like to remind you to check out a couple of the podcasts we produce here at the Daily Journal. The Memo, all things Northeast Mississippi, news and entertainment with myself and W. Derek Russell. New episodes every Wednesday and Friday. Find it in iTunes, your podcast apps, or at memo.djournal.com. 
Be sure to check out Wednesday's episode. We visited with Caleb Bedillion, who talked with us about the proposed new jail for Lee County. Also, Thomas Wells spoke to us about his In Focus photo essay. Dennis Sid talked about the Toyota Mazda partnership. And Derek filled us in on his story about the future of the Bancor South Arena. Also, check out Double Coverage, an Ole Miss and Mississippi State sports podcast with Paris Alford and Logan Lowry. New episodes every Thursday or Friday. And you can find that in iTunes or podcast apps or at doublecoverage.djournal.com. For more on the stories I talked about today, you can pick up a copy of your daily journal or visit djournal.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at djournalnow. Give our Facebook page a like as well. That's it for News Break on this Thursday. I'm Brad Locke. we we'll see you next time.